group of people. And this generation um, uh, that, that is the righteous group of people or the righteous generation is the church. That is what I believe. And it is the, um, the, the, the heavenly Zion that we call ourselves that ought to make a difference in this world. Um, the, 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 the rabbis in the olden times taught uh, many commandments to the Jewish people to obey if they wanted to be righteous. Um, but understand this in the, in the New Testament, when you come to him and follow him and, do, and, 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 and commit to doing the things of the Lord, you're counted as righteous in the New Testament. Psalm 15 is not a prescription for being saved, but a description of how saved people ought to live. And that is what Psalm 15 is about. And so, uh, that is, we have to live to please God and to have fellowship with him. Um, this morning, there are five or six things that is mentioned in there. I'm just going to give the highlights and, 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 and move on. Uh, the first thing is in verse 1, and it says, Like this, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hill. The, 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 that, that dwelling place that we are talking about, who will dwell in that is those people that seek God's presence. And so those who seek God's presence is the one that dwell in his holy tabernacle or in, his, in your holy hill. Number two, uh, verse two through five, it talks about obeying God's precepts. And how can we obey God's precepts is mentioned in all those verses. How, number one, is living with integrity, being blameless, Character, two, eight, two in the first part it says, he who walks uprightly. He who walks uprightly. Uprightly means being, uh, having a blameless character. Blameless has to do with soundness of character, integrity, and complete loyalty to God. The children of God, you can fake it, you can show others what it is, but God knows your inner heart. When you live with integrity, he knows that you are a person of character who is of child of God. Number two, you not only live as a person of integrity, but also a person who is honest, a righteous conduct. Same verse, it says like this, and speaks the, uh, and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Verse five, it says like this, he who does not put out his money at usury, or nor does he take a bribe against the innocent, he who does these things shall never be moved. Dear people of God, those who are honest. Honesty is what you show forth from your inside. It is again, sometimes people, and that is why honest conversations, honest deeds is what God is looking for. In every aspect, you may, just like I said, you may fake it, you may give a tithe, just like that person, Akula, uh, when, when, when the uh, Ananias and Sapphira came to uh, Peter at that time, they wanted to show off that they had something, but God knew their inner hearts. The same thing, Lord knows whether we are honest or not. Number three, you have to show forth that you are obeying God's precepts by being sincere. Look at chapter two, uh, verse two in the last part, speaks the truth in his heart. Speaks the truth in his heart, sincere conversations, or with sincerity, you are truthful in everything. I've said this example before. Once upon a time, there was a, a, a church member who came to church with a bag. And I asked him, uh, hey, are you going somewhere? He said, I'm just going just, just for a distance. The next day, somebody called me from New York and said that, hey, you, the such and such brother is here. What, is he moving here or something? He went for a job interview there. Uh, but he did not want to tell. Sometimes we stress the truth and we do not want to say the truth. Yes, you cannot say the absolute truth to everyone sometimes because you need to be careful. Be careful because sometimes it can become chaos. But on the other side, if you really want to have a conversation, be honest about it. Be sincere about it. Be truthful about it because that matters. Uh, verse, uh, the chapter three, uh, verse three and four, it says, he who does not backbite with his tongue Self-explanatory. Nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a wild person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord, he who swears in his own heart and does not change. You know, 
a person's word should matter. Today it doesn't matter. Many people say things so that others may, may be pleased with you or you may look good in their sight. But when you say a word, keep that word. When you say that you follow God, follow God. Don't be on both sides. Be on the straight line, straight and narrow that follows God. If you say to your neighbor, I will help you. If you say to your brother, your sister, that I will help you, do not, when the going gets tough, you don't run away, but you are truthful in your conversations. So, two, two main things that we said, that who may dwell in the house of the Lord, those people that have, those people that walk in his ways, or those that seek his presence. Number two, those people that have to obey God's precepts are those that have integrity, have honesty, and sincerity. And number th the last part is, verse, uh, verse 5, the last part it says, he who does these things shall never be moved. Those people will move if you don't trust in somebody, especially in God's promises. The children of God's promises of God's are yea and yea, and he will answer to the fullest. Trust on him, follow him, hold on to his hands, and he will take you to the right end. This morning, that is the Lord that we serve. Let us serve him with honesty, with integrity, with sincerity, and trusting on his promise, and he will take us to the very shore that we are longing to go. 70 or 80 years, we might be here, but if we live a life in integrity, sincerity, and in honesty, and also trusting in God's promise, he will take us to the right place.